Balderdash on a podcast. I'm joined as always by my co hosts, uh, Binary Gary, Gary in real life, uh, who is a, an amateur hairstylist um, uh, and uh, also uh, joined by Allison Plus, Allison in real life. And she is a sock puppet manufacturer. Um, my name is Chris in real life. I'm Jazz Sequence on the internet. And on this show, uh, Allison will conjure up a topic uh, that neither of us, uh, none of us have discussed prior to recording the show. We will be reveal the topic on the show. And Gary and I will attempt to discuss the topic uh, without knowing what the topic is. Yeah, that about covers it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's part of the show where you promo, so you can follow us on social places like Twitter or our website. By name uh, hang out in our Bella. Slack. We're in our Slack. You should be there too. Um, or not. I mean, <laughs> I mean yeah. <laughs> You're Never invited. You're in... Yeah. You I mean, you don't feel like you need to bring, like bring anything. Just, just your wit and candor. Or you can submit a question and let us know that you actually listen. I always forget like a big thing. That's the big thing. Yeah, listener yeah. questions are awesome and they would be useful. Um, I mean, they are useful. We would like more of them. We appreciate yes. all listener questions. You can submit listener Especially questions yours. on the website binaryjazz at us on the forum we have or on Twitter. Nobody uses Twitter. Nobody. I I use Twitter. Not for questions, but I use Twitter. I'll just start asking you questions via Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> um, it occurred to me that we could also say that our site, um, Greenlock Icon with Chrome, yeah, big day yesterday. A SSL, day. <laughs> it's a pretty exciting day. I don't know. I feel like, while. yeah, I feel like it was like a big nothing. Like I, like, well, here's the day and. You know, it was Tuesday. <laughs> Just a good day. Just enjoy it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Great. So, what's new? I, yeah, well, you know what? Let's, let's do something different today. Let's go right into the topic. <laughs> I'm actually, I really, uh, well, whatever. I like nerded out on this topic, so I'm excited about it. But I also, I realized that in the past week or so, my uh, my household has basically become a binary jazz. I don't know. I was gonna say cesspool, cesspool, but that makes it sound gross, and that's not. <laughs> it's basically just like a a, a, a whirling dis discussion of what will Gary and Chris know and what they won't know. So something will come up, and I'll be like, "Do you think?" And my partner will be like, "Yeah, no, they'll know that," and I'm just like. Oh. <laughs> Or just oh, like, oh, that's so stressful, though. Like, no, and like, just like a disagreement of what people do or do not know. Because, because so now I'm wondering if this is going to be one of those topics like, well, they should know it. And what if we well, don't? Well, yeah. no, but no, this isn't one of the things that even came up. It came up on my radar, and I was like, oh, that's really cool. Um, oh. Okay. And then some, but like, other things have come up where, I am I am just a jerk, and I'm like everybody knows what that is, and then my partner's like I didn't know what it was, and I was just like oh, it's like maybe nobody knows what it is, <laughs> and then I'm just like that's maybe just a weird pocket of knowledge. But then see, you come up and surprise me, and and know things. <laughs> and <I'm> like, <laughs> no, but in the weirdest of pockets, where I was just like like I won't like the cycling thing. That that was a surprise. Well, for you and me both. <laughs> I was just listening to, uh, to our last episode yesterday because I was doing show notes, and, um, which I hadn't got to yet. 
and I I actually really wanted to do the intros in a stuffy British accent because of the British accent that I used when I was uh, saying hypertext transfer protocol. Uh, <laughs> oh, you know, I thought about that several times this past week. <laughs> also, I got feedback that your pronunciation of extreme with your Italian accent was very on point as far as nicely done. Yeah, so there you go. <laughs> Feedback from the streets. <laughs> who's who's commenting on my Italian accent? The people I know who are, are Italian there. listeners. <laughs> I guess our the Italian community. The Italian community yeah. was like, I thought that could go off the rails as far as an offensive portrayal of an Italian accent. But it wasn't so bad. It was pretty good. <laughs> wow, I am Italian. Chris is big in Little Italy. Yeah. We'll keep <laughs> big in Italy. Yeah. Just <laughs> big. <laughs> Little Italy. I just wanted to say that. I mean, <laughs> they probably are like, who? But, you know. Now, which one is he? <laughs> <laughs> Differentiating the, one, right? the voices. The bald one or the unkempt one? I don't. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So the topic okay. is. <laughs> <laughs> is Grawlix. Grawlix. G R A W L I X. Grawlix. Wow, I like to say it. Mm -hmm. It's a fun, fun word. Not German in origin. English in origin, sort of. Yeah. I mean, as much as anything is. Oh, man. I used to have a Grawlix t shirt <laughs> in the mosh pit days. <laughs> Black and had their tour schedule from the summer of '98 in the back. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Rolex. Yeah, what's pyrotechnics. The, what's the band that dresses up as? Um, okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> right on my wavelength. Thank you so much. I mean, you make that voice, and it has to ob obviously be followed up by Guar. Guar. <laughs> Because you can't say guar in any other voice. You just say guar. It's like, what, what's that? But you say guar! How are what, you feeling? Um, you guar? What, who was, who were uh, guar's influences? Like, who came before guar? Uh, Kiss. Largely. Um, Kiss. Yeah, I guess that's, yeah. I mean, because they, like, guar obviously took it, like, to the extreme. They were yeah. like, what's the farthest we can Kiss, take it? Kiss and Alice. No, no, further. Kiss, Alice Cooper, Ozzy Osbourne. Yeah, that's right. That seems right. Okay. Yeah, they're actually, um, I, I, I did some research into Guar uh, a long time ago because I had a coworker back in my working at Whole Foods days who was super into Guar. So I'm like, Guar. Ants on me. Yeah, don't get me started about ants. Um, so I'm like, Guar, like really? And, and so then I started listening to, to Guar to see like what he was into and I started doing research and, and Guar, um, there were a bunch of like art college uh, s students that decided to make a band uh, sort of along the same lines as uh, Lady Gaga was an art student and was doing something just bizarre and in interesting that would like take the existing genres and just kind of tweak them. Um, and yeah, they, they, that's, so there are a bunch of like art, art school nerds uh, in, in real life. Which I totally appreciate. I don't like their music anymore, but I totally appreciate that they're art school nerds. Similar to Lady Gaga. I don't really like her music very much, but I totally appreciate that she's an art school nerd. I feel like, yeah, I feel like the backstory, you're just like, oh, okay. Like, this, it all comes together more. It, makes, it starts to add up in a certain equation. What I really like about Guar too, is that they're, they're uh, activists for PETA. Like, there's all sorts of uh, PETA uh, ads with Guar in them. Really? Yeah, yeah. Look at these horrible things they're doing to cows! <laughs> the best part about this is is like the microphone clipping portion. It's it's pretty fantastic. I hope that I hope that the rest of your family is like, what the hell is going on? Yeah, who's right above me? Just another morning. Just another. Morning. Yeah, they're not asleep anymore. <laughs> we do have fairly good insulation in between the in the between the floors and the and the like walls. That. I'm trying to I think of some bug stuff down um like around the chair i'm sitting in <laughs> to treat this this is fair but these ants are i don't i have i have ant people coming today too this afternoon i recommend a ring of salt for protection do you remember 
hmm, probably seven or eight years ago, there was an infomercial for a product. Um, it was like a big goofy plastic gun you pumped once and fired and it shot salt at flies. So you would kill flies with salt. Like it just like, like just regular table salt. Like, and um, I bought, I don't know, 96 or so, something of them and sold them on the internet. Um, but they, um, yeah, yeah. Um, but but the, I had never understood the thought process. Like, cool, well now you have a dead fly and salt to clean up. Like, <laughs> this, I mean, it was really effective. I mean, like shooting a fly, like it, it, they, it dropped them where they were. I mean, it was, I don't know. I, but then you have a dead fly and salt. Sounds like a gritty mess. I always felt like it would be a perfect thing to sell to like a greasy spoon diner, you know? <laughs> I just thought it would be hysterical that like, I don't know, a guy would be like, chunk, chunk, <laughs> like a fly ball. Entertainment of nothing else. I never would have thought that that would work. So I shot myself in the hand um, with it <laughs> to see like what it felt like, and it—I mean, it. Oh, I'm not perfect. a lot of velocity. Yeah, yeah, not a lot. Of, I mean, I was curious because because I had the same thought process. Like, why why does this work? Like, it seems like the salt. Uh, what are they? Granules would would not be enough without. I mean, they're so light. I mean, have much velocity. Um, but I mean, you could shoot from I don't know a couple feet away. You didn't need to be like right up on it. I mean, you could be flying the flag. So I shot myself in the hand to see what it felt like, and it it felt like somebody flung a bit of sand at my hand. Is it is it the projectileness of the salt, or is it the salt itself? I'm fairly certain that, um, like, if you put sand the salt in it. penetrated the the fly in some way, and that was the end. yeah. <laughs> Sorry, that was a. Just, I don't know. It felt I mean, <laughs> very, very graphic. <laughs> it did. I, mean, I don't know. I mean, I was trying to like choose a word that didn't seem so like horrendous and murderous in okay, nature. I already, used, right? I already used the word cesspool. So <laughs> I think I think if we hit Dyson Sphere, we have we have hit somebody's bingo board in this episode. <laughs> I hear oh jazz God. bingo. Oh no! Now we're gonna build that thing too. Damn it. <laughs> One more thing on the on the docket to get done. Um, yeah. So uh, speaking of things that we've built, um, I just wanted to <laughs> I just wanted to make a comment on the genre nader, which has uh, reached almost half a million genres uh, now. <laughs> and who is who's Wait. building all these genres? It's not me. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, I don't know. It's pretty I mean, amazing. The bot, but the bot only tweets, you know, a, a finite a dozen times a day, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. And page loads only count as one, generally, if you hit the page that has the, I mean, we're not getting that many page loads either. We get, we get at least a thousand new genres every day and somebody's doing it. It's in one of these Slack channels, maybe. Yeah. So we have, we have, we have genre nader the bot. We have genre nader the API, uh, which you can uh, learn about on our website. And we have genre nader the Slack bot, uh, which you can install on your Slack teams. And we have now a total of 15, channels 15 slack teams using uh genre nader and they're not all us which is <laughs> i mean once it got past four we're like holy cow we yeah that's when the excitement started anymore. people are using this thing yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah and it's completely anonymous so if you have a weird name slack team like we won't know what it is <laughs> yeah. that's the disappointment though so i want i want to know people's weird names <laughs> yeah but confidentiality, privacy, I get it. I'm on board. Well, it, it is a piece of information that Slack shares. And we had a conversation about, should we look at that or not? And we decided not to. Nah, it's more fun. Yeah. So Grawlix. Uh, I feel like Grawlix is similar to Roblox, wherein it is a uh, weird, uh, in Minecraft, where it's a weird uh, video game that is primarily targeted at kids where people develop uh, their own modules for it that then can include anything from like murder fantasies and snuff films to like porn. Um, I think that's what Grolix must be. I feel like I, I feel like I feel Grolix, like heard this. I, I feel like Grolix probably is like even seedier. Uh, like it, <laughs> Like there's there's Minecraft and there's Roblox and then there's Grawlix at the like the very bottom of the barrel in terms of in terms. I of, vaguely uh, feel like I know what this is, um, 
but but not really. Like I, I think that I'm confusing with something else. So I'm gonna throw out what I think it is, and then Chris will immediately correct me with what I'm thinking of. Um, and then we'll go on and throw some other. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's who it was. Um, so I think Relics is. Um, I want to say like a microscopic or a small insect, like a multicellular organism with like uh, it's like ugly and claws and stuff. And it was named by um, Peter some children's book author. No. Um, Children's book. Doctor Seuss. It wasn't Doctor yeah. Seuss. It was recent. It was uh, uh, Mo Williams. J.K. Rowling. <laughs> is it Williams or Willem? I think it's Williams. Willems, it's it's Mo Williams. Yeah. Yeah. I love his illustrations. Um, I met him. I have no idea who yeah. this is you're talking about. Well, you are missing. So Mo Willems actually is is, is interesting because he used to be a writer for uh, Sesame Street. Uh, and now he's, he does children's books and the books are like fantastic uh, because they're really snarky, but they're snarky in a way that kids understand. Um, and, and, and not, not like, not mean spirit. Yeah. Right. Right. So the book that he was, uh, he was doing a book tour, uh, which is when I met him for a new book called uh, Goldilocks and the Three Dinosaurs. Um, mm. And it was all about how Goldilocks found a house where three dinosaurs lived and the dinosaurs were trying to eat her. Uh, and much like Goldilocks and the three bears, it was actually the same Goldilocks. She just found another house and this house happened to be the house of dinosaurs instead of bears. Um, <laughs> She's been through a lot this Goldilocks. Exactly, exactly. She keeps walking into yeah, random people's right. houses. And the problem with the house that she found is everything's really, really big. And like, she couldn't get into the bed. She couldn't get in like, on, and she finally found a way to get up onto the table and she went into like the porridge and there was chocolate porridge and she just swam in it. Um, I like the sound of this. Yeah. Um, I won't give away the ending. Yeah. No so spoilers. he also, yeah. So he also has a series, um, Gerald and Piggy, right? That's him? Elephant, yeah. And, Elephant and Piggy, yeah. Well, it's Gerald. Uh, the elephant's name is Gerald. But, this, but it's not called Elephant and Piggy. It's called the the is it series. Is, yes, the series is called Elephant and Piggy. I don't think it is. It, I yeah. Mm. I think it's called Gerald and Piggy, and Gerald is the elephant, and Piggy is the pig. Gerald I, is the name of the elephant, but the name of the series is Elephant. <laughs> <laughs> if I get attacked by ants again, I'm gonna go find the book. These are the in the show notes, and I will be correct. What was that, Allison? Just to be clear, what? Said, just to be clear, these are books for that your children read, but yeah, you're well, now ensnared in, into the plot. Okay, cool. Also us. Yeah, we, we, we got one from the library called I Really Like Slop, which is I an love the sound of all of this. This, is, this sounds like great yeah. material for my niece as well. And, and Piggy is very excited about Slop. Uh, Piggy is a girl, and so she was very excited about Slop, and she wanted her friend Gerald uh, to eat the Slop, and Gerald's like, no, it's Slop. It looks gross. <laughs> <laughs> oh there's such wonderful books yeah um so Grounds is not that small organism i was thinking of so i'm curious because every, everything that you guys are describing is like seedy and like gritty is it because of just like the x and the w and the like rawr, rawr, rawr? yeah i think it's because it of is. the growl the growl <laughs> sounds pretty seedy and gross too no when i was in um when i was in uh like middle school um, and I was trying to come up with like band names, uh, the band names that sounded, uh, most interesting and like, uh, like hardcore to me were, were names or the names that I could come up with were all things that had X's and Z's and, and I don't know why, but so, so like, so like when I tried to form a band in like seventh grade, we were called Zygote. <laughs> which right. which is really a, a mundane name for a thing, but it sounded really cool because it has a Z in it. Um, yeah. yeah. Followed by a Y. Yeah, right, exactly. Starting right. with the back, alphabet backwards. This isn't like a new JS library, is it? Grawlix. No, Grawlix. Okay. Grawlix JS. It's yeah. the new JavaScript library that I've written. No. Of course it is. <laughs> Actually. I was reading uh, the other night about uh, a programming language called Rockstar. Um, it was on the internet, it was on the Twitters, uh, and it was uh, written as a way so that uh, companies can no longer uh, ask for in their job hiring pages. Uh, they can't po put that they're looking for Rockstar developers, because if Rockstar is a programming language, then Rockstar would actually be a thing. Um, oh, so Rockstar developer would actually describe 
a thing and and the language itself was written such that um the ideal uh style for writing in rockstar would be um would make your programs uh look like songs like 80s like meatloaf songs so um so it was all about like is all like you know, basically common language and it was like it, it it was really thought out like it was surprisingly complete um in terms of how the thing worked and they have this whole like github page on like how how he would write in rockstar and then the and the goal ultimately was to uh then issue rockstar certified developer stickers to anybody who can write rockstar um <laughs> That's amazing. What, did it transpile to something? There was a, there was a, a JavaScript transpiler from, uh, written for Rockstar, yeah. Damn. That's elaborate. Yeah, it is. It's, it's far, far too much time to spend on, on a joke. It's like, I mean, it goes way beyond that. I appreciate the commitment. Yeah. I, I don't know. What episode number is this? Uh, one zero one one one, I believe. That's an awful long time to spend on a joke. Who knows how far it'll go at this? Yeah, point. well, it's turned into a thing. It's a thing. It's a binary. Yeah. It, I don't know yeah. what episode number it is though. <laughs> oh really? <laughs> it's pa it's past my point where it's past the point where I can like just look at it and easily yeah. easily like translate in yeah. my head. Yeah, I would have to stop and think. Did you learn to count on like on your fingers in binary? No. Mm. You do that. So like you could do like, um, if it was uh, and I'm no, because I never used binary. Uh, as much as hex because I learned uh, assembly language. So I like we were sort of taught binary, but as a like a concept. Um, and whereas hexadecimal, we actually um, Use, yeah. used. Yeah. Yeah, not a lot of binary, um, except for Booleans in uh, like WebDev. Huh? Okay. Um, Relics well, is not a JS library. It's not a small, disturbing organism. It's named not by, named by. Um, it's, it's not. not yeah, it's not a uh, a Guar tribute band. It's not. Um, <laughs> it should be a Guar tribute. Band. I want it to <laughs> should be. be. Yeah, right. Like, but what, um, are other, what are other bands that have dressed up in that? Like, I'm, uh, I feel like there are a lot, but I feel like I can't name any of them. Yeah. Bands, bands have dressed up, like dressed up in like. Like to that extent, there's is there there's a there's a few other like metal yeah. bands, um, but not any. I mean, I think Gore takes it to an extreme that no one else. Oh, Green Jelly slash Jello, um, uh, is probably the other band that is that would take it to the same level as Gore. But Gore took it to like far beyond yeah. anyone else ever did. Yeah, can I think can Green I add? Jello is probably the only other one that got close. That. Can we ask now what Growlix is? I want to discuss what it really is. <laughs> is it time? I love the it's frustration time. level. Like, no, no, I'm tired of this. <laughs> it's Guar. It's, it's yeah. It's Guar's next level of like their dress up and then it's, it's Guar's second album, Growlix. Yeah. yeah. Growlix. It's about the planet of Growlix. Um. Yeah. Okay. So the Growlix is the unpronounceable characters that are on the top of your number row on your computer keyboard what so like also like seen in like comic books when someone's cursing so it's like oh. you know at sound octothorpe dollar sign ampersand asterisk and the group of it is called agrolix so it's like kind of like a profanity symbol clump huh yeah Right? There's I a know. name for that. I know. Um, and so it was kind of coined by the cartoonist who did Beetle Bailey. I don't know if you're familiar. Okay. Yep. I yeah. read the comics like every day. Um, Beetle Bailey's a classic. Yeah. And he wrote a book and he kind of made up all these weird terms just kind of in satire, but then people actually started using them. What, um, there other what weird kind of career would he have had? Are there other weird terms that he made up that you know? Yeah, like so the cloud of dust left when someone like runs away really fast is called a briffet. 
<laughs> okay, oh that makes gosh. sense. Because that's that's the sound effect that sometimes accompanies it. Yeah, okay. Um, what are some of the other ones? Perfect. That was, it was, it's, yeah. It was just, I, yeah. yeah, I went down and there, I was like, oh, there's tons of words here. And I was like, I could use one of these for every topic and <laughs> frustrate you for the next 10 weeks. Um, but I thought Grawlix kind of summed it all up in one. Yeah. Uh, oh, the one that, you know, the one that looks like Saturn? That weird okay. um, yeah. symbol is called a quimp. Oh. There's all sorts of, um, <laughs> pludes, pludes are when they're like sweating and the little sweat drops are coming off. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I just something, <laughs> something different in manga. <laughs> Anyway, what were you saying, Gary? You were in the middle of something, and I interrupted you. I was, I was going to wonder what kind of career he would have had if, if George Bush had been elected president. George W. Bush. Because I mean, I feel like the interest in comics about like the military was probably tapering pretty heavily until we like landed back in conflict. You know, it wasn't relatable. I mean, you know, the military was shrinking in size, and most and most people had had books they knew in the military. So all this crazy, you know boot camp jokiness and Beetle <laughs> Bailey seemed to suddenly like no longer uh, seem tame like you know but that was humor that was humorous in the 70s right and too young I mean I wasn't around for it in the 70s either but I, I don't know I mean that's my speculation well I think I guess <laughs> this is a bit of a leap off but like for the term Grolix as well, it's just like, would he be able to, he probably used that all the time because so much cursing that couldn't be represented in his military Beetle Bailey. That's, that's, a, that's a solid point. And I also wonder um, if, he was, if he was 40 years later, if he would just write, write the words and be done with it, you know? But you're not, a, I don't, I still don't think you're like, well, I guess if you're then it'd be like independent publishing and like it wouldn't be, syndicated in a newspaper in the same way and I don't Wasn't even know. Doonesbury famously like pretty pretty raw? I don't know. It was never really I it was just it was always a I was too young like, over my head. Was funny. Yeah. yeah. Yeah Doonesbury is funny to me now. Yeah. But Doonesbury wasn't funny to me when I was reading it. Was very, yeah. yeah. Which is sort of the thing like uh I comic strips in general is is as a as a medium as an art form and as a form of satire is a really interesting thing because like the people that are going to read it most are going to be the kids because of the colors and because they're comics and because it's you know whatever um but many of them are targeted towards the adults that are reading the newspaper that are up in the news and they're making social commentary like often scathing social commentary and and totally. and the kids aren't going to get that. They might like maybe get parts of it. Like I sometimes maybe sort of got Doonesbury, but like not on a regular basis. Whereas now it's like, okay, yeah. Um, and like this modern world, I love this modern world. Um, but like, yeah, you have to have like a, like this modern world is like even makes itself uh, sort of a, uh, its own, it like, it, I think it wrote itself into a corner because it's like, not only is it extremely like highbrow, but it's extremely left. So like, it's not like as widely acceptable at, you know, to be going into like your regular Sunday comics that are, or that are going to everyone. Yeah, and comics in general are fascinating. And, totally. a dying, and a dying medium. Well, sadly it's a dying medium because the-, the um, There's the newspapers media. are dying. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Our, our local, um, I have, ra I have ranted about our local paper here several times before. And I'll cancel my description as, edit as the editor as edit as the editing quality clearly decreased um, to the point of like not being edited. I mean, like to be if I wanted to read crap, I'd write it myself. You know, I mean, <laughs> it's just like I mean, it, it was. It was if I can recognize grammatical errors, then it's really effed up. Um, is, is, is sort of where I was coming at from. So it was, it was frustrating and I canceled my subscription. But the, the remaining um, folks working in the newsroom uh, unionized this week. Hmm. So it's, it's, I mean, it's been, in, it's been in free fall. Salt Lake Tribune uh, recently downsized uh, earlier this year. Um, and they cut a whole 
regular section out of the paper to accommodate their shrinking staff and um, this big, big news thing. Um, it's a sad and sad also because we had just subscribed, started subscribing last year. Um, so frustrating. Yeah. You know, I, and I don't, I don't know. I mean, I like to think that ultimately the, the, what replaces that is like, um, the nice thing about newspapers is, is there was so much to cover locally that you, you end up having like a, a, a broad section of the local community of writers, you know? So you, you got varying opinions, you got various different takes on issues, sometimes two writers on the same issue, you know, depending on, depending on how big it was, and it, there was value in that. I, I feel like we, we're gonna end up with like local websites, right? But they're gonna be so segmented on, on viewpoint, you're not gonna get that same dialogue in the same, on the same yeah, site the without real intentional work on the editorial side. And there's no money in that, you know. Yeah. It's it's the problem. It's and the, 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 type, the, money writing, the type, of, type of writing that is successful on the internet is very different than the type of writing that appears in newspapers. It's not like a, it's not uh, an analog. Um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because newspapers historically are the things that keep you know people in check, keep governments in check, and keep politicians in check. And if you don't have that as a source of of you know educating people about what's actually going on, maybe under the surface, that's written in such a way that it's not there for clicks and for, you know, ad revenue, then yeah. it, it becomes compromised. Um, um, yeah, you, I don't know who said it. There was a quote though. Um, someone said never pick a fight with someone who buys ink by the, by the barrel, which I think is, you know, that buys what by the barrel? Politi- ink. Hmm. Oh. If you piss off the newspaper, right? It's a bad move. <laughs> they have, you know, they have readers every day and they have lots of paper and lots of ink and, an extra page doesn't cost them much. Yep. So anyway. we've reached the point of the show where we can uh, answer listener questions. We have one remaining listener question uh, before we get to Allison's <laughs> pre-written <laughs> listener <laughs> questions. Uh, and this one I think should be uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, Dirk Lurkin, who I think is a fake name. I don't know. It sounds legit. <laughs> there's there's a there's an email address associated with it, but Dirk Lurkin just sounds a little bit. <laughs> that just oh, to that end too, let, like let's let's take a sidetrack. Like the email address. If you want to submit listener questions, like we don't care if it's a legit email address because we're not using it for anything. So put yeah. in a fake email address. Yeah, you're welcome to. Yeah. Screw you guys at dev dot null is fine. Um, I hate binary jazz. <laughs> um, Ouch. Yeah, I know you guys. You guys went real dark there. I was gonna think I, I listen all the time and adore this at gmail dot com. <laughs> yeah. So so Dirk Lurkin, Dirk Lurkin, uh, asks us simply, how do peanuts rate? And I think this is an easy answer, or easy question to answer, because peanuts are non sentient and they don't rate anything. They don't, they don't have, they don't understand the concept of ratings. So there's no way for them to rate anything. (laughs) I'm not wrong. You're not wrong. You're so right. And that's what's, that's what's stalling me. (laughs) Um, Let's just, let's just assume we we understand the intent of the question and not be smart asses about it. No, I'm gonna um, be a smart ass. <laughs> that's, that's fine. It's all about. Being smart. A, I would like to. I would like to take a sidebar and wonder um, what scale would be utilized <laughs> to rate peanuts. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Like, is it a pe- is it a nut scale? Is it like from? Is it, ca- is it in comparison to macadamia? Is it like, is it like yeah, wall? Like walnuts or, to cashews or yeah. walnuts to macadamias or something? Well, yeah, like in the group of nuts, where does peanuts fall as far as your preference or quality? I guess. I feel like if there was a like a line graph with, with like no peanut to, or no, I'm sorry, no nut to like infinite nut, right? Somewhere in the middle would be peanut, but it would have such a broad like dot that it could almost reach both ends. It's a very utilized nut. Oh, but you're thinking of like how, like how much it's utilized versus just like, what do you like? Like if you were given uh, like I mean, name the peanut. Right? Sometimes, like peanuts, I like them, and they fall very far at the, like the infinite end, and sometimes they fall at the null end. But you if know? you're given like, like a, bowl, a bowl of peanuts, walnuts, almonds, macadamia, which do you reach for? Macadamia. You only... And but because that's 
I would absolutely not reach for macadamia. No. Okay. Well, good. Then we wouldn't have to fight for it. Yeah, you could have <laughs> you could have that bowl of macadamia. I'm not. I'm not. Yeah. Not into macadamia. Good I'm to not know. Fight you for it. Yeah. Yeah. Um. What are the nuts that they like crack open and dye red? Pistachios. Why do they dye them red? What is that crap about? <laughs> I love pistachios. They're like. I do too, but why dye them red? I love the process. They're like the lobster of nuts. It's just like a fun. <laughs> the lobster of nuts. Yes, that's <laughs> awesome. Oh, that's like, so cool. I like being given a task <laughs> where I am rewarded with like a salty little yummy thing at the end. <laughs> yes. There's a new yeah because um, when you get the when you get the shelled pistachios, it's it's not the same. Not the same taste, and it's not the same experience. It's definitely more rewarding to have. Um, uh, pistachios and shells. Yeah. Or as they say in Italy, pistachio. There we go. Yes. For our Italian listeners. <laughs> For our Ita the Italian community. <laughs> oh, I want to go. There's get a new um, um, gelato place near us. Or as yes. they say in Italy, gelato. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> Oh, Take it favorite? from the guy who's big in Little Italy. <laughs> <laughs> Coming at you. Wait, what are your favorite gelato flavors? Well, I was thinking, like, why is pistachio such a great gelato flavor? It is. Such a uh, good one. I don't know. Yeah, I, and I don't get it. It's nutty. <laughs> oh, that was poorly timed. We still have, like, three minutes left. That would have been a good thing to go out on. <laughs> We can just crop it. <laughs> <laughs> just like done. Boom. Like drop. Um, I feel like that's probably like, like if you're still listening at this point, um, we, we don't actually know when the show ends. We just talk until the video cuts off and then it's over. So some endings sometimes are really good because um, computers are random and sometimes yeah, the, the funny thing ideal. is so so if you have never used zoom and you've never used zoom on a non-pro account by the way zoom if you're listening we would love a pro account um, not listening totally not listening, <laughs> not listening. um <laughs> if, if you've never so so zoom does like, when you're less than 10 this. minutes uh, it gives you a timer say. actually it doesn't give you a, t a timer it, it gives you a warning a pop-up uh for less than 10 minutes and then the timer appears at like less than nine minutes i think and then when it gets to less than two minutes it says less than a minute remaining which is extremely frustrating because you and it's totally than, not exactly two minutes it's like totally not exactly two minutes either yeah but you have no idea because it's stopped timing at that point it's it stopped showing you how much time is remaining it's just like whoever uh, minute remaining and you're there there you are so whoever yeah, wrote the routine never have any idea whoever wrote the routine to like end it there was like a reason they couldn't just accurately figure out what the count was maybe because of time drift between our computers so they said what the hell with it like we'll just like randomly pick a number between 60 and 120 and no one will know know the difference so boom kill it that's it you know that's what's happening here. right now actually we're into less than a minute so we'll be here for the next minute and some odd seconds <laughs> <laughs> do we have time for another question um Sure. In less than a minute, describe. Uh, Allison asks, uh, "Your house is built on a base that rotates, so it can face any way you'd like it to. How would you choose to use this feature?" Obviously, uh, that, obviously, if the house was built on a base that rotates, I would be constantly rotating the house. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, because if you can do it, then why the hell shouldn't you do it? Just, Just be a lazy Susan. <laughs> What on earth? Wow, what a brilliant idea. Um, yeah, I would, I would definitely, um, when it's cool out, I would definitely utilize sunrise and sunset in the window of the room that I'm in. Yeah. Um, and probably in the summer too, and just be warm because it would just be so nice to have that natural light. Oh, that'd be nice if you were working on your laptop and there's a glare, you can just yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I move the sun. <laughs> <laughs> and on the flip side of that, you could you could make use of the sun. You could like turn the house yeah. so that you don't need to use electricity as much. Yeah. Or if you had solar panels, yeah. then you could turn the house so that it's always facing the sun to absorb the. the uh, I, I'm more on board with like always rotating, even just slowly throughout the day. You like walk out, you're like, where the hell is the car? <laughs> Other side of the house. I was gonna ask what speed you'd be rotating on constantly. 
slow enough that you don't notice it, but fast enough that when you go outside, you're like, whoa. <laughs> what? <laughs> Oh, it's like those rotating restaurants, like at, at uh, airports yeah. or whatever. <laughs> oh. Wow. How'd you come up with that? Thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on iTunes or Google Play. You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at, at binaryjazz. Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the form on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz.